Opening this feature with a quote from Reddit user SuperImagination90 on a thread discussing the viability of a Resident Evil 6 remake, quote, The problem with remakes is it still has to be that game. It still has to be RE6. End quote. Looking at Resident Evil's most divisive entry in isolation, ignoring the developer's recent home run with the RE2 remake and new games in its storied survival horror franchise, you'd have to agree with Super Imagination 90. Resident Evil shouldn't be remade, its convoluted story blighted by bloated campaigns, its finicky cover system underlined by subpar gunplay, a travesty considering RE6's identity shifting to full-on action shooter, and its over-reliance on QTEs make it one of the most derided games in existence. A modern iteration of Resident Evil 6 could sharpen gunplay and eradicate the QTEs for sure, but that story will need some serious fat trimming, and even then, it'd still be the same mediocre game. But imagine for a second a Resident Evil 6 remake was confirmed. What if the original game would succeed in a modern reworking? Leon Kennedy's campaign, easily the most survival horror-like of the four, might be worth saving and expanding upon. The C-Virus strain and its capability to metamorphosize some of the series' most horrific creatures was admittedly a high point. RE6's broadcast of iconic characters banding together to halt a global threat was certainly compelling too. There's potential here, and despite the execution failing back in 2012, the developer's recent hot streak with RE2 Remake should give us confidence that they can whittle RE6 down to its vital bare bones and expand from there. Trimming the fat in a remake is something the developer inadvertently did with the Resident Evil 3 2020 remake, and while entire sections of the original campaign mysteriously went absent, choice-based narrative paths being eschewed, and the once eponymous nemesis being far less of a menace this time around proved to be a disservice to that game. Such omissions could work quite nicely for Resident Evil 6, a story focusing on Leon and Chris Redfield, with Ada Wong potentially as a tertiary character or DLC flitting in and out of the action, would definitely improve things. Jake and Sherry's campaign should be dropped altogether as playable content. Jake functions merely as a person of interest against the broader lore anyway, and taking his campaign away wouldn't affect the story whatsoever. Resident Evil games could be described as nuanced, creeping, restrained experiences if it weren't for the phantasmagorical monster designs and gratuitous boss battles. A constant problem with Resident Evil 6 is any semblance of shuffling terror of which the series is famous for is gone, with bombastic, relentless, dumb gun fun in its place. A Resident Evil 6 remake should work to massively tone down the action. Resident Evil Village, for example, straddles the line between action and dread very well. A Resident Evil 6 remake should mirror this, and Leon and Chris's campaigns are the best way to achieve it. Perhaps, while we're on the subject, the story shouldn't center on the global unleashing of the C-Virus, but instead explore the consequences of its threat, with our heroes fighting desperately to stop its mass release rather than it already being upon the world via a series of bombastic missile explosions. There is an elephant in the room that hasn't been addressed yet, and that is Resident Evil 6's insistence on cooperative play. As you'll likely remember, each of our heroes are flanked by supporting characters. Helena Harper for Leon and Piers Nivens for Chris. But their inclusion feels more about keeping in step with Six's predecessor, which saw Chris Redfield shoot his way through Africa alongside Shiva Alomar than something necessary. Co-op was intrinsic to gameplay, but it wasn't deployed to anywhere the level of its counterparts of that era. Plus, and this might be conjecture, Ada Wong's campaign indicates how much cooperative play was shoehorned into RE6. Now, as controversial as it sounds, a Resident Evil 6 remake should do away with cooperative play altogether. The series has shown that companions appearing momentarily during minor phases of the overall game can work quite well, so perhaps RE6 should go down this route. It'll certainly help the gameplay and the story be more focused, which is something it desperately needs. Should these major changes mentioned be implemented into a Resident Evil 6 remake, then we're looking at a different game, aren't we? 
Going back to our Reddit user's comment, at this feature's outset, a remake still has to be RE6. Well, these alterations are fundamental overhauls, which begs the question if it could still be classed as a remake. Is there not scope for the developer to reboot RE6 instead? A story of global conspiracy, a horrifying virus strain, a campaign focusing on a maximum of two characters, nuanced gameplay with less emphasis on shooting, this doesn't sound like the same game at all. Reboots are proven to be successful. Reusing classic characters in a new timeline puts introducing new characters, settings, and set pieces, took what was already great about the originals and remixed it just enough to render its own distinct thing. There's a wider argument at play here too, and that is the implication that the developers should instead plow their efforts on new stuff. Well, barring a Resident Evil Code Veronica remake, which arguably should have happened after Resident Evil 3, this stance is easy to agree with. Maybe when all is said and done, Resident Evil 6 doesn't deserve a remake seeing as it wasn't a stellar entry in the RE canon to begin with. RE6 was released 12 years ago too, and we've all seen the backlash Naughty Dog fared with their remake of The Last of Us, although negativity in that case rested on the fact that the game had already been remastered along with it being similarly young to Resident Evil 6. Did it do enough to justify its price tag? Maybe, but was it necessary? Not so sure. There's likely more out there who would prefer to see a third entry in The Last of Us, and this is probably the same by the point in Resident Evil's remake schedule. In 2019, we had an admittedly excellent remake of an already incredible genre-pushing game in Resident Evil 2 and the well-received Resident Evil Village is already three years old. The time is now for a fresh entry. Now, of course, rumors abound of a ninth Resident Evil game, one that's been in the works since 2018, is labeled as the developer's most ambitious to date, and is whispered to have the largest budget of any Resident Evil game thus far, coming in 2025. The developer, of course, can work on more than one Resident Evil title at a time, without diluting the content of either, but should they go down the rebooted route with RE6, it'd surely start to get too convoluted to fit into series canon anyway. Perhaps RE6 is best left in the dustbins of history, an action-adventure curio that's always been better served as being a spin-off than a mainline entry. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request, we upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.